Right, so my name is Peter McKeague. I work in data management within the Heritage Directorate of Historic Environment Scotland. Just to correct the, la correct the last the point made about us as an archive, we are a digital archive. We have got our core trusts here with approval application in at the moment, so we are set up for the long term preservation of digital archiving. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Digital Dark Age, it's probably a bit of a dramatic title, but we are not seeing all the information that the, the, the people, the practitioners are creating, it's certainly not reaching us, even the reports aren't reaching us, certainly not the data. Uh, I'm undertaking this work as part of a small grant funded by the Royal Society of Edinburgh, looking at maximising the value of geographic information from archaeological projects so we can work and others can work more efficiently, just like access to data, not necessarily just PDF reports. Uh, the last 15 years we've moved from targeted service to landscape style approaches. That's the heart of the heart of Orkney World Heritage Site, where there's been large scale magnetometry surveys undertaken on that. And that produces a lot of problems in terms of uh, challenges, are actually, the same uh, visibility of all the projects. Data remains a constant issue, just access to that information. There's inconsistent approaches to the data standards across projects. Each practitioner has their own set of standards and interpretation. So we can't, take, can't easily take one, one uh, set of results and easily compare it with another set of results without having to uh, re-engineer the, the interpretations. Uh, integration of large, uh, large area surveys actually does form a problem in traditional sites and monuments historic environment record systems. We're very much focused on thinking about sites, whereas that on the right is a landscape and it's got a lot of anomalies that fall outside the original site extent. And we do need to think about digital data, data volumes, and the, 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 the long-term uh, sustainable solutions that, that these pose. And we also need to think about the data needs to be accessible and reusable beyond the project that you've undertaken the work for so that other people have the ability to find, access, and reuse that data. Um, the, the need to share scientific data has long been recognised in the International Year of Geophysics in 1958. That's a long time ago. It's saying all observational data shall be available to scientists. Uh, the Valletta Convention, European Convention for the Protection of Archaeological Heritage, again, the same point is made. And in Europe, uh, for public sector bodies, the Inspire Directive recognises the value of pu public sector uh, anomalies, ge ge geophysical survey data being made and shared accessible to, wide uh, to a wider audience. Uh, and that poses a problem because only about public sector information. What about the information that's created in the private sector and deposited in a public archive? And that's a that's an issue to be discussed. Uh, the requirements, the, the, the standards and guidance for geophysical uh, data, it's very good. It says all electronic, uh, an electronic record of project details should be created through OASIS, and that information is, is fed through. Um, it also captures the technical details for each technique used in the report. That information is, again, there's an option to fill in that information in OASIS. And one of the questions, we, we're redeveloping OASIS at ADS. Um, one of the questions is, are we capturing the right metadata to document the geophysical service that you're, taking, uh, you're, 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 you're undertaking these days? Uh, that form was set up probably about 2007, so it's, uh, the, the, the metadata that we're collecting needs to be reviewed. And we need to think about the digital environment we're working in. Uh, we work in the licensing and reuse. Copyright is fine, but we want to be able to allow other people to reuse. So we've got the example where one contractor is undertaking a geophysical survey, and the other, another contractor comes along and does the excavation, they should be able to access the, the, the previous information to, to inform their, their strategies. Uh, field work in reporting in Scotland, uh, we have two methods so, for field work reporting each year, discovering uh, archaeology Scotland's discovering excavation in Scotland, compiles an annual summary of field work reported, uh, undertaken in Scotland each year, and we also have the OASIS system. Both those systems uh, feed into uh, regional uh, records, the historic environment records, and also then to Canmore. There are also uh, feeds out from, from the ADS report, uh, from, the, from the ADS, from OASIS to the Geophysical Survey database. The information can be updated in the Geophysical database, and you can find where something has happened. You can see how large an area has been, been covered, so the large area surveys have just been represented by a point. And also for offshore data, we have a feed out to the Medan Marine Portal to allow people to access, um, to, 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 to discover um, marine geophysics data. I'm talking about that tomorrow. Uh, through discovery and excavation in Scotland, we can see the gaps in the record. Uh, since about 2015, there have been about 70 remote sensing projects reported through DES. We're seeing maybe about a fifth of that coming through in OASIS. 
The entries provide a useful summary of the work undertaken and help, help update records, but the spatial component of where, where, where you undertook the survey, all that information is missing. You're certainly not seeing the, 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 the anomalies, the features that have been, 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 been recorded. OASIS is very good. It captures the metadata, as I said earlier. Uh, it's mainly uh, capturing information about projects undertaken as a result of planning conditions. So, as part of the written scheme of investigation, we'll say you will deposit the information. We're not probably not seeing all the geophysical surveys uh, coming through in, the, in OASIS. There's various reasons for that. Client confidentiality, the reports are too large to upload, is a common argument. Uh, the value of the digital data is not realised. There's research projects we're challenged engaging with OASIS. Community projects, which again aren't engage, engaging with Oasis, and the work may be some subcontracted, and the subcontractor will pass it back to the to, to who's commissioned the work, but that then doesn't reach us. Uh, so we're redeveloping uh, Oasis in both England and Scotland, and we're building and discovering excavations of flow line in Scotland. So hopefully we'll, we'll start to pick up all the additional research projects and community projects that we're not seeing currently. So how do we address the barriers to reporting field what needs to be looked at? Uh, as I said, OASIS captures the metadata. This is uh, from the, the time team and I have Mull, where the practitioner fills in the information, and that information captures the, the, the techniques, the resolution of the data. That's an X, XML format, and that can then be reused and shipped on to, as I say, the geophysics database and into our own records. But we're not seeing the... Um, survey extends, but certainly not the interpretations that doesn't come through in Oasis, that will come through as a PDF. Uh, so as I say, one of the questions we want to find out from, from this audience is, are the metadata, metadata, metadata requirements adequate for our current practices? What, 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 should, what should we be recording? What, what are we recording at present that maybe shouldn't be included in the future? And then, as I said, we need to look at the, I'm thinking about spatial data. We need to look at the, 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 the need to document the history of investigations. This is a uh, work I undertook back 2007-2008 as part of the World of the Antonine Wall World Heritage Site nomination, where we mapped um, previous resistivity surveys from 1995. We digitised those from plans in our archive, 1998, and then Historic Scotland commissioned additional uh, magnetometry and resistivity survey in 2007. And they're the pink areas in that. And product of that was we've got a standard PDF report with uh, a series of maps, the grid extents by technique, grayscale plot of the results, analysis of the survey results and interpretation. And yeah, that's that's great. And you can read about that information in the report. But because we were thinking about a GIS system for the, for the management of the, the World Heritage Site, we also put in a, a condition that we would get uh, the, the digital data as well. So. Uh, GSB supplied us CAD files uh, and uh, GIS files that we then can archive and use in our GIS alongside our area photographic transcriptions and other data sets, excavation outlines and features discovered. So we can bring data from multiple types together and, and build a holistic picture of the archaeology of the, uh, the World Heritage Site. Uh, so the question is, are we getting the best value for the survey data? We need to break the tyranny of PDF plans and reports or one thing, your problem about large area surveys, you've got the plans from the 16 reports. This is information about ge geography and GIS. It should be in the GIS format for reuse in GIS systems. Uh, talk briefly about archive in the ADS guides to good practices, the types of archive uh, on the left, the, the geophysics, the data, the project material, and the project documentation. And um, thinking about the reuse of that data, I need to know the projection system, survey grid extents, the, the, the trench, uh, the, the, the grid survey area, the raw data in an open format, ideally process data, um, the documentation, how you process that data, the georeference state, raster plots, and then analysis, both the identification of anomalies, and whether it's in vector or raster form, preferably vector, because we can reuse it and reinterpret it. And again, an interpretation of the archaeological features, and then as well, the, the standard PDF report document. And critically, the licensing, copyright and licensing, so that we, we, we understand the terms and conditions of the reuse of that data. Uh, just skip briefly past the deposition charges, talked about ADS uh, easy earlier. In Scotland, we don't, we don't charge for the deposition yet, um, something that may, may come at some point in time. We have a very different approach to the ADS, which has got a very upfront charge, which you can at least use as a rough estimate, and obviously there's concerns about when you actually get onto deploying the ground, uh, that 
you may find that you've created much more data than you anticipated. And as I say, you know, we need to move away from site-based approaches to, to cultural landscapes and think about the information that you create helps us make decisions elsewhere in adjacent areas. So we, we, we want to make sure we've got best available evidence supported by robust data so that we can inform decision making across the historic environment. And just a series of questions at the end, which should just give improve the visibility of the data. Show the archive requirements are defined cost at the beginning. Think about beyond the immediacy of doing the project, but actually the reuse of that data going forward. And uh, then for us, actually, we're probably a lot of HERs ourselves are not set up to deal with large scale surveys in the way we, we structure and think about sites and monuments. So we need to think about uh, large scale, scale area data sets. And we do need to think about long-term preservation. Record systems are fine, but they do. the digital archive does need to have an archive plan for the long term. It's no good just keeping them on a server or um, CDs or data sticks. Copyright and licensing, can't stress that enough. And then uh, we need to develop consistent data standards so that we can take information from different practitioners and combine it all together. And we need to have a dial a keep, develop a dialogue between the data creators and the data creators. Thank you. Thank you.